Thank you. I recognize Ranking Member McGovern. Thank you. Um, first, first uh, Chairman Comer, you said it in your opening statement um, and in the letter that um, you sent to the Rules Committee that you request an appropriate rule uh, for this uh, legislation. W what is that? Appropriate rule that uh, was, uh, we hold criminals is it an accountable. Open rule or close rule or uh, uh, amendments or what, do you, what, do you, what is an appropriate rule? What, is, what are you asking for? An appropriate rule. Well, what, what is the definition of that? A rule that uh, is appropriate. Uh, this is a rule that this is the rules committee. We want an appropriate rule to well, go on the floor well, to where your, we what, can do our job and hold uh, well, criminals accountable. What is your opinion since you put it in your letter and you put it in your opening statement? What is your opinion of what an appropriate rule is? I mean, would an appropriate rule be a closed rule? Whatever the rules committee deems appropriate. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, that's then, then I mean, I, I, cause I, I asked the question because you used the word appropriate. You could have just said I request a rule, but you said an appropriate rule, and maybe the, maybe the chair of the of the rules committee can tell us what an appropriate rule is. Um, I, I'm not. I, I my Republican friends like to use that, but um, I, I don't. No one can define it for me. Um, I mean, I don't know what. Maybe it's hiding behind a one of the statues in the Capitol or something, we can go look for it. But uh, I'm just curious. I mean, you're, you're asking us to bring a bill to the floor, um, and you ask for an appropriate rule, but you can't define what appropriate is. I, I mean, w without due respect, Mr. Reagan Bieber, this is a very serious issue, and I think you're yeah, trying well, to make a joke yeah. out of it. And I go through this in Oversight Committee yeah. with Raskin's little lapdog, Moskowitz, but you know, the people in, the people in uh, Washington, D.C. are furious with, yeah. with this out of control crime in Washington, D.C. The House Oversight Committee has legislative jurisdiction over Washington, D.C., and we are trying to do what the people want and make this city safe for its residents and all the millions of tourists that come here every year. Well, anyway, I, I appreciate that, and I just want the record to re reflect that you use, you use a word in your letter and in your testimony that you can't define, which, you know, I. I, I did define it. Yeah, you, you just said appropriate, appropriate means rule. appropriate. I don't, okay. I, again, I don't, I don't um, you know, um, let me, um, who's, who's the author of this bill? This is Byron Donald's bill. Right. Where's he from? He's from Florida. Um, Mr. Raskin, are you aware that um, in Florida, um, uh, adults can be treated as juveniles up to 24? I, I believe that's the same rule that D.C. has in right. yeah. both of those are more liberal rules than we have in Maryland, right. but we want to leave it up, I think, to each uh, state and yeah. local government to decide for itself. I guess the question is, why why does the author of this bill think it's inappropriate for D.C., but it's okay for his home state of Florida? Well, but I wish my friend Mr. Roy were still here because I really wanted to respond to some of the things that he said that go, go right ahead. to he, your he, point. He, but I, I, I do believe that there's an effort here to scapegoat Washington, D.C. I mean, the, the my, my friend from Texas... Um, that seems to be completely unaware of everything that Mayor Bowser uh, in Washington and Chairman Mendelson, the chairman of the council, and the 13-member city council have been doing to fight crime in the city, which is part, of course, of a nationwide wave. And in fact, they've had real practical effect, positive effect. Total crime in D.C. Uh, this year is already down 16 percent. Violent crime is down 25 percent, and homicide is down... 20%. So uh, several months ago, they passed something called the Secure DC Act, which would be illegitimate under the legislation that our friends on the GOP side have brought forth today. They increased the criminal penalty for possession of a sawed-off shotgun or a ghost gun. And I know some of them don't like legislation relating to ghost guns, but, but in DC, they brought a criminal penalty for it. They increased p penalty for possession of a machine gun. Again, I know some people don't like that, but the people in DC decided to do it. They increased penalty for repeat sexual abuse. They enhanced sentences for crimes of violence committed in the parks of DC and in recreational property. They increased um, and enhanced sentences for crimes of violence committed against vulnerable adults. Um, people with a mental disability or older people. They enhanced uh, sentences for crimes of violence committed against rideshare drivers, transit operators, metro rail station managers, and employees and passengers. There's been an epidemic of crime against people who drive buses 
and metros across the country, and they took action against it. They also created a whole bunch of new offenses for possession of a firearm with intent to sell. Again, I know some of my friends who fashion themselves Second Amendment champions don't like any legislation like they passed in DC that uh, criminalizes uh, the selling of firearms. They created a new offense for strangulation. They created a new offense for directing organized retail theft. They created a new offense for possessing a firearm with a removed or altered serial number. They created a new offense for firing bullets in public. They created a new offense for the unlawful discarding of a firearm or ammunition outside of the law. Again, that may or may not be right for Maryland or Kentucky or Minnesota, but that's what they chose in DC, and they're taking action. And I just think it's an insult and an affront to fellow Americans, albeit unrepresented uh, by voting members in the House and the Senate, to just blindly overturn all of their laws, accuse them of doing nothing, accuse them of not caring about the public safety and public welfare in their own jurisdiction, and then make it impossible for them to create any new offenses. And I'm starting to think maybe it's because so many of their offenses have to do with the problem of gun violence, and maybe that's why they want to essentially legislatively disarm the people in Washington, D.C. Well, I appreciate that, and I, I, wish, I wish when they talk about crime, they talked about um, gun deaths. Um, and the top states for gun deaths are Mississippi, Louisiana, New Mexico, Alabama, Montana, Missouri, Alaska, Arkansas, South Carolina, Tennessee, Wyoming, in Arizona, uh, but for whatever reason, they don't like to talk about that. Um, uh, Mr. Raskin, let me get this straight, straight now. So our Republican colleagues uh, portray this bill that is before us as, as tough on crime. Um, uh, let me ask you a, a couple of, I'll do, make this quick, so yes or no questions. Would this bill that we're dealing right, with right now, that what they call the D.C. Crimes Act, would it permanently prohibit the D.C. Council from increasing the penalties for murder, child sexual abuse, rape, carjacking, and every other crime? Yes, and my friends have not denied it. Okay. It strikes me that this bill not only prohibits the D.C. Council from increasing or decreasing criminal penalties, but could be construed to prohibit the D.C. Council from establishing any new crimes at all, since D.C. could not, quote, change any criminal liability sentence. Creating a new criminal penalty could be construed as a change. Do you agree with that? I absolutely agree, and you could only create a new crime if it did not have a sentence attached to it. So you mentioned in March the D.C. Council passed the Secure D.C. Omnibus Amendment Act, which increased penalties for, among other things, gun crimes, such as possession of a machine gun and child sexual abuse. It also created new crimes such as strangulation and firing bullets in public. Is it true that this bill that we're talking about here today would have prevented the D.C. Council from passing the Secure D.C. Omnibus Amendment Act. Yes, and it seems like several of their new statutory offenses related to gun crimes and crimes related to gun violence, and that might be part of the motivation in trying to wipe out their legislative authority. And as you know, this Congress, uh, I think by any measure, um, is dysfunctional uh, and can only seem to get around to bringing over the finish line must-pass bills. So under this bill, would Congress be the only entity that could change, that could increase or decrease statutory penalties in D.C.? Yes. Now, former President Trump has repeatedly called for the federal government to take over D.C. Um, and I think my Republican friends like this power game that they play. I mean, they could actually give D.C. more representation in Congress uh, with enhanced voting rights for our, our delegate, uh, give her the same rights as we all have and maybe even talk about two U.S. senators, but he has talked about taking over the D.C. government. Legislation has been introduced to repeal D.C. Home Rule Act. Home rule has been under greater threat in this Congress than in a generation. Should D.C. residents be worried that a Republican Congress, and God forbid, a Republican president, uh, that, should they be worried that they could abolish the D.C. government entirely? Well, that should be among their worries, yeah. given the hypothetical you've just offered, yes. Yeah, and, I, mm -hmm. and Madam Chair, I, I mean, Mr. Raskin, when he began, uh, he talked about how crime, the crime rate in D.C. has gone down. Uh, just so that there's no misunderstanding, I want to ask unanimous consent to insert in the record the Metropolitan Police Department 2024 year-to-date crime comparison as of today, May 14th, 2024. Without objection. Did you have something you want to add, Mr. Raskin? Well, but I would just say this. I, you know, I think 
not just with respect to DC, but with respect to horizontal federalism generally, I think that we should be cautious about looking in other states and seeing that they punish this or that offense less severely than our own state and thereby call them soft on crime. Uh, in the District of Columbia, for example, there is a maximum penalty for armed robbery of 30 years. In uh, the chairman's home state of Kentucky, it's 20 years for armed robbery. Does that make the people of Kentucky soft on crime? Well, I would reject that. I would say that they are responding to whatever they think the various legislative factors are. For unarmed robbery in DC, it's 15 years. In Kentucky, it's 10 years. So it's 50% higher for both armed robbery and robbery in the District of Columbia than it is in Kentucky. Um, you know, we've had conversations in committee before about carjacking. The maximum penalty for carjacking someone in Washington um, is 40 years. Kentucky doesn't even have a carjacking statute. The most you could get someone on would be first degree robbery, which is 50% of that time. And please, I, I stand corrected, Mr. Chairman, if I've gotten any of those facts about your state wrong. Oh, that's right. We don't have carjacking. Really? Because I just found a case in uh, March. Uh, from your state in Saint, the neighborhood of St. Dennis in Louisville where there was a serious carjacking. Louis City. Oh, actually, that was May. That was this month, May 7th. Uh, if, there, if there's a carjacking in Kentucky, it'll be in Louisville, I can assure you. you there's no carjackings outside of Louisville in your state? I've never. I'm, I mean, I'm sure in the course of history there's been some, but you have one a day in Washington, D.C., sometimes two or three a day. Uh, and, and with armed robbery, uh, the, the burglar is going to – there's a lot higher – uh, chance if a if a burglar is going to try to rob someone in in Kentucky in rural Kentucky it, that they're going to so is that an argument to lower the penalties because Kentucky because uh, that's why Kentucky they're lower penalties merchants <laughs> many Kentucky merchants many Kentucky homeowners uh, practice their right to bear arms and that's a disincentive for burglars to commit armed robbery in Kentucky versus cities where they where they have uh, excessive limits on, on guns. So the gun issue goes both ways. It can also be a detriment to crime. But in any event, my point, Mr. McGovern, was simply that the, the people in Washington, D.C., which is, of course, not part of my uh, jurisdiction, but it is under the jurisdiction of the Oversight Committee, um, the people in Washington, D.C. are taking their crime problem seriously, as I'm sure the people of Louisville are and the rest of Kentucky are. And there's crime all across the country. And uh, apparently what they've been doing in Washington, D.C. has been working as they've had uh, fairly dramatic reductions in violent crime and in homicide. Right. So under this bill, basically, I mean, uh, the D.C. Council could not even increase penalties uh, without Congress doing it for them, uh, which I think, uh, you know, and, and, this, and this Congress can't even you know, pass what they have for lunch, never mind, um, you know, serious legislation of, of any kind. Did you want to add one other thing? Well, I mean, that's what American federalism is about. Yeah. And um, the district constituting the seat of government, far from being the colonial plaything of those of us who come from other states, um, it should be accorded the same kind of deference that we accord the other states um, in terms of them making their judgments. By the way, my, my staff is finding a whole bunch of carjackings that took place outside of Louisville. There's a town called- <laughs> It would be uh, in Louisville. It would be in Louisville. If there are carjackings in Kentucky, they'll well, be in Louisville. Do, do you know of a town called Hebron? That's, in, that's the suburb of Cincinnati. Well, that's not oh, I see. But it's in the state of Kentucky, nonetheless, right? It's a suburb of Cincinnati. Okay, well, they found one uh, recently there. It seems like there are some carjackings outside of the border of uh, Louisville, and I'm sure that the people of Louisville uh, w would want me to correct that misimpression. Okay, well, I, 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 appreciate, um, uh, I appreciate your answers to my question. I think this is a joke, quite frankly, that we're doing this. Um, and, um, and again, I... Um, you know, I, I, this is par for the course. Uh, with that, I yield back. Thank you. I would yield to uh, Mr.